Well, good morning from the Cottage Farmstead Garden. I'm Rebecca. My husband Nathan is actually over at Growing Green Family Farms today getting ready for the farmer's market tomorrow morning. So I thought I would take you around our garden and give you a garden tour. It is late May while I'm recording this and a lot has changed since the last time we took a detailed look at our garden here. So we never had a full garden day to come out here and film everything getting planted because we never had a full day to spend out here planting. We have so many projects going on here. We're trying to get a plot open for growing green over here. Um, we have cows for the first time this year that require moving every day and checking their water. And then we have two rounds of baby chicks and our mature hens and we're trying to get up more fencing. So we never had a solid day to come out here and just get everything planted all at once. So we did it piecemeal, fitting it around our schedule. So we planted a few seeds one day, put a few tomato cages up another day, planted out transplants over a couple weeks. And today I'm putting in the last seeds in the ground, at least in our vegetable garden. So I thought I'd take you around our garden so you can see what we have growing this year and get an idea of some of the plans that we have for more perennial plants in the future. So we'll start our tour here in what we're calling our herb terrace. So when we started doing the fill dirt for our house, we realized the slope of the land was a bit more drop than we had anticipated. Originally, we were just gonna have it totally level in front of the house and have it all be garden. But when we started filling it in, we realized we have a, quite a few more feet of drop than we were anticipating. So we did it in terraces um, to allow us to have flat zones for gardening in. So up on top, where our stairs will eventually come down out of the house, we're putting perennial fruits. So we have raspberry canes on the side of the house that we'll be adding to. We got blueberry bushes in the front. We'd like to put a tea camellia up there. And then we're gonna infill with some pretty flowers around that. And then there's another, about two steps down into our herb terrace where I'm standing right now. So in here, we've been planting a lot of the flowers and herbs that we were trying to move from our old house and the ones that we had put at our old urban farm plot location. So I have our yarrow plant here that some of it was at our urban farm plot. Some of it had been in pots for over a year. Um, we have some of the daylilies that we divided up from our old house. We have some of our black eyed Susans that we had at our urban farm plot. We have one of our echinacea plants from our old house that we plan on cultivating and inviting. We have some daisies over here. So it's a lot of things that we already had that we were just finding homes for here in our garden. So let's take a quick overview tour of the herb terrace. In the center you'll see that we have three sections. And these we ultimately want to be more of our annual flowers. So in the first one here we have sunflowers, we have zinnias, and then we have snapdragons and nasturtium and marigolds in that final one. On each side we want to ultimately have more perennial flowers. We'll intermix some annuals, but we want to have perennial herbs and perennial flowers along the edge to help manage the soil and keep it covered year-round. So we'll start going to the left here. This here we have, we bought some time, we got some time from growing green family farms, and then we moved some time from our old herb garden. So we were trying to get it to take over this whole little mound here. And then we brought our marshmallow plant from our urban farm plot and it's been loving this location as you can see. It is about to bloom as well, so we're really looking forward to having some color in here soon. Now along here we don't have any perennials yet, so we planted a couple different types of basil. So we got some of the Genovese and then we have some purple basil in here spread some bachelor button seed and then when we spread our perlite there's usually a lot of microgreen seeds still mixed into it so we have some dill starting to grow for us and then we have some zinnias along the edge and then we got a lavender plant over time i'd like to get more lavender plants and plant it all along the edge of this terrace right here to help with the erosion rather than having to do a retaining wall how the plants do have the perennial plant roots do the work of holding the dirt for us. But this year we started with one plant on this side and one plant over here. And we hope to start some lavender from seed next year and really start getting this living retaining wall going. So across the path, we had the zinnias and lavender there. We have the zinnias and lavender here. I like symmetry and more formal style gardens. So you'll find a lot of repeated plants in a symmetrical pattern. Uh, throughout our garden and that's something that we'll be developing over time as we add more perennials. We have some chamomile that's coming up here. I planted some of a different variety on the other side. It doesn't look like it germinated for me so we won't have that symmetry this year but that chamomile looks like it's coming up nice and strong. 
And next to it we have our echinacea plant that survived the move. We potted up several of them, but this one was a lone survivor, so I'm super excited to see that it's about to open up all of its blooms. Continuing on, we have more bachelor buttons. Our fever view plant survived the move. Oh, and look, it's about to bloom as well. I don't remember what I planted here, but it obviously didn't germinate. But my little sticks there are marking don't weed this zone until you know what's there. Have some more oregano. And then another variety. This is Tulsi basil and a random radish that came in with our perlite. Then we have parsley row here. Be using that for storing herbs for our kitchen. Add a nasturtium plant. This was a rosemary plant that we transplanted and it obviously didn't survive. And then we bought a new rosemary plant this year and that's thriving. We're thinking about getting a couple more rosemary plants and maybe having this section be rosemary, similar to having the thyme over on the other side of the garden. Then here's some more chamomile. My sister-in-law was getting rid of some of her thinnings, so I stuck them in here and they are doing well. Another spot where some of, the, some of my old seed didn't come up. Then we just put these out last night. These are Black Eyed Susans from our urban farm plot. We had a nice cool day yesterday and it's gonna be cool and cloudy again today. So we're hoping they make it since summer heat is really upon us. And a random marigold. And another patch. I had planted borage here, but my seed was like five years old and obviously didn't germinate. So I need to find some other annual to stick in there this year. And this is my first time growing Celosia. I wanted to have more variety for cut flowers this year, so planted a few of these out. Um, oh, I think that last one over there is gonna make it. We had, oh, I thought a casualty back there, but it looks like it's going to pull through. So I'm looking forward to all the colors. I love how the stem is super vibrant. Even the roots were the same color as the stem. So we should have some pretty vibrant colors to put in summer bouquets. So obviously another large feature of this side of the garden is our grape arbor. So we bought grapevines on a whim like three or four months ago. We planted them in the ground and we didn't have any sort of trellising set up. I threw some tomato cages around them temporarily and then we came out one day and realized, oh no, they're attaching to the tomato cages. We need to get something up. So we got some pressure treated posts from Lowe's and then we did shishugi bond burning of just wood scraps that we had from the sawmill to get this built. But I think it turned out fantastic. I'm excited to have the grapes fill in on each side and grow across the top. It'll be very beautiful. So we got two Concord grapevines, which are my favorite type of grape. We got a three-year vine and a two-year-old vine. The three-year-old vine may give us fruit this year, according to the website, so we will see. But it's definitely growing quite vigorously and it's already starting to attach to our trellis here, which is good news. So hopefully it'll start climbing on up. Continuing the tour through the herb terrace, we have a volunteer dwarf sunflower that's about to bloom for us. More yarrow, another random radish, a whole bunch of random dill. And then down here we have itty bitty little plants. I'm trying to grow cumin this year. It's a spice that we use a lot in our cooking and it's supposed to grow pretty well in our climate. So I'm curious to see how it does. Um, it hasn't grown a whole lot since we transplanted them out here. I transplanted four or five of them and it looks like Two of them are doing well. This one's a little scraggly. So we'll see if they make it, but I'm curious to see how easy or hard it is to grow cumin for our kitchen. And as you can see, there's more dill and more radishes here. One of the reasons that we let some of this stuff grow is first off the dill we can use when we're making pickles. And then we're also able to harvest it and sell some of it at the farmer's market through growing green. But for these Rad random radishes and like random mustard flowers and arugula that start bolting on us, we let them bolt because it does attract the pollinators. It's one of the first things that starts blooming in our garden. So it's a food source while we await our main garden to start blooming. Continuing on, we have salvia sage. The, I think it's a blue or purple color. I'm curious to see what that turns out to be. More daisies from our urban farm plot, more oregano from our old house and then Black Eyed Susans. So right here we have our path, and so this will go straight up to our front door. And we'll continue around, and then we have our symmetry here again. We have another Black Eyed Susan, we have more oregano, we have more of the daisies, and our yarrow over there. And on this little wing, I had some random old snow pea, or sugar pea seeds. And it doesn't look like they're climbing too much yet, but 
it might be getting a little late for them. They took a while to germinate, so they may not produce well, but figured I'd use up some old seed. And then this is a new plant that my mother-in-law got me the seed for. It's called Agastache. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that okay. And it's supposed to be good for tea and have beautiful spiky flowers. So I'm very curious to see how these grow here in our garden. Like I mentioned earlier, in the center we're focusing more on annuals. And so in here I have snapdragons, marigolds, and nasturtiums planted. And then over in our next bed, I have different varieties of zinnias. Mostly they're in the queen lime series, which is my favorite variety of zinnia. I love the green intermixed with the orange and the blush and the red. So we have that in here. I think I maybe planted a little bit of Persian carpet and I think green envy was another variety that I stuck in here. So looking forward to seeing all the colors in here. And then in our last one, we have sunflowers. So I was very excited to be able to get a packet of Sunflower Steve's Van Gogh Fantasy Mix, which has a mix of like all the different crazy genetics that he has on his sunflower farm. So I'm very curious to see what grows here. I also for fun threw in some of our yellow and rusty sunflower seeds that I've been saving for the last several years just to add to the genetic diversity of all these sunflowers. I'm very curious to see what unique sunflowers we can start growing here on our homestead. Well, that is our herb terrace. So we are going to step down into our vegetable garden here. So if you've been with us for a while, you've probably seen two videos where I talked about this beautiful English style, very formal layout vegetable garden that I was gonna plant. And looking back, here you go. She didn't plant that garden. No, I didn't. So we started laying it out. We did start staking out, but then I realized that these beds are gonna be like five or six feet deep. And like, it's gonna be kind of hard to reach across, you know, radishes while trying to harvest the tomatoes back in there. So we nixed that idea pretty early on when we were making beds and decided we were just gonna go with more classic market style beds. Since a lot of the hand tools for no-till gardening and market gardening are designed for 30 inch beds, we were just gonna go the simple route and do 30 inch beds. One departure from the classic market garden is we have much wider paths in here. Usually it's about like a 20 inch path. They're pretty narrow in market gardens and we've tried them before. Grain Green does that for their paths. They're very narrow. It's just enough to be able to walk down. But Nathan and I are fairly tall people. So when we're kneeling down or if we're gonna sit down and weed through the carrots, our legs take up a fair amount of space. And so, and since we're not concerned about every square inch earning us money in this garden, we decided to go with wider paths. So it's just more comfortable. We can get a fairly wide wheelbarrow down each aisle to make it easier to add compost every year. So one of the optical illusions of having such large paths in our garden is it looks like we're growing this massive garden but we're actually not growing a whole lot more than we were in our previous urban farm plot. That's one of the things that we try to encourage a lot of people that are trying to get into homesteading is you can grow a lot in your backyard. Our original urban farm plot was about 25 feet by 30 feet and we grew pretty much everything that you see in the garden behind me in that much smaller space. You do have to get a little bit more creative or fight some of the vines a little bit more since you don't have as much space for things to sprawl but you can grow a lot of food in a small space. You don't have to wait for acreage to grow a abundant garden. So let's start here to my left. This is primarily our pepper zone. So I have two rows of different types of bell peppers. I'm growing uh, Carolina bell pepper again this year, trying to see if I can get it to grow. It's, I mean, it has Carolina in the name. It should grow well in South Carolina. The other row is I think Etuda. And it's a bell pepper that originated in Polish market gardens, but some of the reviews on Baker Creek said it grew really well um, in Greenville, which is the county next over to us. So we're hoping that produces well for us here. You also see a bunch of radishes around there. There is two reasons why we planted those radishes. One, when the pepper plants are getting established, it just helps cover the ground and prevent the amount of weeds that we have to fight. And then we also plan on eating a few of them and then the rest of them will be selling at the farmer's market, which gives us a little extra cash to supply seeds for our garden next year. Down here with our pepper pants, you'll see we have a string tied all the way across between two T posts. And this is because we have really high wind here in our microclimate. Um, it is always breezy here. It's unusual for us to have a still day. So we know wind is gonna be a problem especially with summer storms as they come through. So we are going to add another string up here as the plant grows taller, just to help support it on the higher wind days. Also in this section, we have a couple of squash plants. I don't grow a ton of summer squash as Growing Green has a whole 100 by 30 foot 
field of summer squash. So there's usually plenty extra giant zucchini that doesn't sell at the market. So I don't focus on growing too many of those. I threw a lemon squash, a crookneck, and a zephyr squash, I think, in here. Just to give us a little bit coming out of our garden for preserving, but usually I can get seconds from growing green. And then in here I have two jalapeno peppers and I think I have a couple shishito peppers intermixed in here as well. So that'll give us some spicy peppers for salsa and the shishito peppers are delicious grilled and roasted in the summer. And then finally in this section is our potato patch. Um, this is one of the first beds that Farmer Nathan got all the compost on and our potatoes are sprouting so I just threw them in here. This is where I was originally planning on planting them but it's where they ended up. And I have spotted one of our nemesis here. Look at that potato beetle. So I'm quick taking a look through to see if I find any more potato beetles. I killed three of them so far. One of the downsides of having a ton of horse nettle that's all over our pasture is that it is a native weed that harbors the potato beetle. So we knew we were going to have problems with them, um, but thankfully we hadn't had too many of them until this past week or so. So hopefully they'll just keep eating the horse nettle out in the field rather than eating my potatoes. So thankfully only those three, but you can see they've been nibbled on a little bit. but we will keep an eye out on those in our potatoes because we definitely want to harvest some this year. And this funky plant here is an Egyptian walking onion and I absolutely love growing them. They are so whimsical. They grow these bulbs on the top of them that then open up and grow a few more bulbs at the top and then eventually they get heavy enough and they fall over and then they replant themselves next to it. So they kind of walk down your garden beds they're not my personal favorite flavor of onion as I'm not a huge green onion chives type fan, but they are my backup onion when I run out of the previous year's onions and I'm still waiting on this year's onions to be ready to harvest. I do come out and harvest some of these when I need an onion when I'm cooking. But mostly I grow them because they're so entertaining to watch grow and onions are great pest deterrents in the garden. I mean, look at that. They're just so entertaining to watch grow. Just pop out at all sorts of weird whimsical angles. The next up we have our tomato zone here and in this first row though I planted a whole bunch of ox heart carrots so that we have some summer carrots this year. The goal is we have all of these different tomato plants that are going to be shading this direction since this is a southern facing slope it gets pretty toasty and carrots are a little bit sweeter if they don't get too hot. So in this first row I have primarily the tomatoes that we're going to be using for our preservation for sauces and salsas and things like that. So these are um, Amish paste and orange icicle, which is a orange paste tomato. This next one here at the cattle panel trellis is our indeterminate ones. I have some yellow pear, I have some Eigelhart cherry tomatoes, and then I have two striped Roman ones in this bed here. And this row here, I have more paste tomatoes that we'll be using for preservation. And then similar principle with the carrots, I have lettuce growing all along here and that will be shaded so it stays nice and sweet and doesn't get too bitter on us. And then last up in this section is our tomatillos. So we love green salsa, it's probably my favorite salsa. So we have our tomatillos lined along here and on the edge of the bed I planted basil, some of or more Egyptian walking onions, more basil, more basil. It's a great pest deterrent and also it just grows great with tomatoes. So next up in this zone, we have a few things intermixed in this first bed. I started with some kale as I wanted to restock the kale that's in our freezer because it's great to throw into soups if you need a quick side dish of some greens. And then interplanted with it, we put our okra. So we have a few okra plants along here. Then I planted a little bit of Swiss chard for the same reason. I want to freeze a few more greens to have for easy meals in the future. Next up, we have more walking onions, and then this is a row of provider green beans. These are our favorite green beans. They're a bushing variety, and they are prolific. We grew a single row of them last year, and we got bags and bags and bags of green beans. So I'm excited to have more of this in this garden this year. 
This row just got planted last night. Like I said, we we're doing this very piecemeal. I planted a red drying bean called Slippery Silks that we like along about two thirds of this row. Starting right here, I planted a yellow French style pole bean that Nathan had some seed that he wanted to try. So we planted a little bit of that here so we can try it. And the next row has some more of the Egyptian walking onions. And then this is going to have our pickling cucumbers. I personally will eat the pickling cucumbers as slicers, so I don't grow both varieties. And we have a little bit of a trellis here. This variety is supposed to be a little bit more bush habit, so it won't sprawl too much. But like I said earlier, we have these wide paths. So it can sprawl a little bit without any problem. And across the way, you can see that we still have some weeds that we are battling here. We didn't put cardboard down in the past thinking the mulch would be enough, but it was not quite enough. So we are taking a page out of Charles Dowding's book and putting more cardboard down. And we need to get some more wood chips delivered here so that we can tackle the weeds and the grass. So as you can see to the right here, that is what was here before we started doing our garden. And we've been super impressed with using cardboard underneath it. It's actually been doing a great job. So we highly recommend the Charles Dowling method with trying to convert a pasture into a garden quickly. Similar to the other side, this was just planted last night. I planted Anazazi uh, climbing beans that my dad wanted me to grow for him here and they climb so we have a trellis here and then along that way I have some more drying beans I have Jacob's cattle beans and then I ran out of that so I planted some more black beans and here I'm gonna be planting today some watermelon and cantaloupe since there's plenty of space for it to sprawl out that way and in here I planted some more anazazi beans in our last aisle here in a vegetable garden we planted earlier this week and oh look you can see we already have some little ones sprouting up so this is all going to be our black drying beans in the areas where there's not a trellis we have a bushing black bean variety that is called black turtle so we have that on each side here and then where we have the trellis i planted the cherokee a trail of tear beans in there we're also going to try and take advantage of the shade that these beans will ultimately provide. And we put some kale for the summer and lettuce for the summer in here, hoping that the extra shade will allow it to continue growing without bolting on us in the summer heat. Well, I hope you enjoyed an extended tour of our vegetable and herb garden here in late May. I'm hoping to be able to do this about once a month so you can see the progression of the garden over the summer. I'll also link above to our 2023 gardening season playlist as we will include different bits and pieces of our gardening harvest and projects out here on that playlist as well. So happy growing everybody and catch you next time.